Good morning, everybody. Uh, the start of another week, another Monday, where we are slowly making progress in our course, slow and steady. There's no need to rush these things. It makes the experience so much more enjoyable. All right. Hopefully everyone is doing well this Monday. And as always, I would just like to get confirmation that you can see and hear me. Sometimes I forget to turn my microphone back on. All right. Good. Okay. So I ended last time by saying that exercise 3.8, 3.9 are in the category of trick questions, which of course is not something we need to be concerned with in a test, but it's nice to see them. Some people like to think about them. Some people like to ignore them. I give you two of these uh, as examples. Use them, ignore them, do whatever you want with them. And then we can move on. It's nice to see that yeah, sometimes out there, there simply are trick questions. And... I kind of need to be aware of it, but uh, they can be very tricky and difficult. Not necessarily in the scope uh, of test questions for us, but it's good to see a couple of them at least. All right. Now we're moving on to some classic problems. And I just have a couple that you may or may not have seen before. If you have seen them before, then of course... Uh, it's one of those that uh, the mystery is sort of gone once you see it. So uh, maybe just sit back and uh, relax while we talk about these, especially the first one. Exercise 3.10. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Every wife had seven sacks. Every sack had seven cats. Every cat had seven kittens. Kittens, cats, sacks, and wives. How many were going to St. Ives? Maybe. I think most people maybe have, have heard of this question before. And I guess it's classic, but it's also in the trick question category, perhaps, this first one, where it teaches us to read carefully. I've seen people reading this and like saying, okay, uh, the man had seven wives, every wife had seven sacks, so that's seven times seven, and then every sack had seven cats, and they do the multiplication and so on and try and keep track of everything. And they sort of get distracted from what the question is asking. The question is asking, how many were going to St. Ives? I was going to St. Ives. I just happened to meet a man and he, the man had some interesting things to say. He's not going to St. Ives, only I am. So there is only one going. And the question is sort of classic in that it is telling me a whole bunch of stuff, trying to distract me from the question. And it's very important to remind myself to read the question. And sometimes there can be information provided that is not really relevant to answer the specific question. All right. Now, whether you've seen 3.11 uh, or not before, I want this is a very important question for us. 3.11. You have two containers. One holds five gallons, the other holds three. You can have as much water as you want, unlimited. Your task is to measure out exactly four gallons of water into the five gallon container. So now, if I draw the two containers here, let's call them container one, container two. One has size five gallons, one has size three gallons. There are no markings on them or any indication of any volume in between. 
The only thing I know, well, I know two things. I know when it's empty, it has zero. And when it's full, it has five. I can't eyeball it and say, oh, that sort of looks like three gallons. I can't do that. They're different shapes. There is nothing I can do in between zero and five for the first container. So I, I want to make the rules here very clear because the problem doesn't specify them completely. I'm here to clarify. Same for the three gallon container. I know when it's empty. I know when it's full. I cannot guess anything in between. And I only have these two containers. I have a tap here. I can full water. I can dump water out as much as I want. I can transfer between them. But in terms of accurate measurement, I'm a little bit uh, stuck. I can't eyeball and guess anything. Okay. I need to make sure that everyone understands the limitations of this question, the rules of this puzzle, before moving forward. No confirmation. Okay, that's good. It's Monday. I understand. So, the goal here, they say, is to measure out exactly four gallons. Now, obviously, the three-gallon container is too small to hold four gallons, so I'm going to have to be left with four gallons in the five-gallon container, but I can't eyeball it. So, I have to fill and transfer and dump and do whatever I need to do to measure out four gallons exactly with confidence. Our goal is to, of course, be able to solve the problem, but very important for this one, be able to explain how the problem is solved. What are the steps? Like a recipe, so that any reader can follow and understand how you did it and how they can do it as well. So, I want to clearly lay out each step, and I'm labeling the containers. So, step one, uh, to sort of follow what the video uh, did, of course they didn't show everything, is to fill the first container. Then I have a little diagram here to indicate where I'm at. So I have a full five in the first, zero in the second. Then, I transfer from container one to container two. Of course, the most I can transfer is three gallons. And then I have exactly two left in the first container. Then I can dump the second container. Don't want that water. Get rid of it. Now I have zero in the second container. Then I can transfer the two gallons of water that I have in container one to container two. I can't really separate that. It's just a complete transfer. So I know I still have exactly two gallons of water, wherever it may be. Then I fill container one with five gallons of water. And that's where the video magically picks up. They didn't show all the in-between uh, steps. So now I have a full five gallons in, in the big container one, two gallons exactly in container two. My aim is to have exactly four gallons. So I can get that with my last step where I will transfer from container one to container two. And because there is only one gallon of space left in container two, I will have exactly four gallons left in container one. And of course, container two is full, but I don't care that much about it. So we are done. Are there any questions about understanding this question, about uh, showing your answer, anything at all? No, I think it's pretty clear. 
All right. So there aren't many of these, though I guess you can take the time and search in Google if you want. There are a couple more problems like this. Uh, really focus on first, definitely being able to solve the puzzle yourself. First, understand the question. So many people, even after I explain it so clearly, I hope, they just eyeball it and say, oh, I'll just measure halfway in container one. You can't do that accurately. The bomb is going to explode. So first understand the problem and the situation, then be able to do it, and then be able to explain how you did it. So all of those things. Sometimes in like a Karuji or something like that, you just do it, right? Sudoku, you just fill it in, you move on. Here we want to emphasize the, uh, the explanation as well. All right. Let us move on to exercise 312. Consider the sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on, continuing forever. Determine the number in the hundredth position. Now, this is a nice, well, <laughs> nice in quotation mark, a nice example to give a little elementary school to me because they can identify that this pattern getting from one number to the next is adding 4. 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, 11 plus 4, and so on. So they can add 4 every time and make the sequence as long as they want. To then give them the task of finding which number is in the hundredth position, it's going to take them a really long time if they do it one by one. But maybe you want a little quiet day and you want to keep them busy for an hour. This is something you could do. However, for our purposes, that is not efficient. So we want to exploit the pattern to be able to jump over everything right to the hundredth position. So let's set this up. You're welcome to pause the video if you're watching it after the fact and do it one at a time and see how long it takes you. I'm curious to know because I am not going to do that. That does not seem like a good time. But if you don't know any better, and you don't have any experience, well, then you kind of don't have a choice, do you? But instead, we are going to think about this and see. Is there anything we can do? So 3, 7, 11, uh, not 14. Did it start with 3? Why do I not remember this? There we go. It did. So the next one is 15, 19, and it goes on forever. So in order for me to skip all these numbers, I'm going to have to find a link. Let's say here, this is the numbers. A link between the number and its position. I'll put the position in brackets so I don't get confused which is which. Number three is in position one. Number seven is in position two. Eleven is in position three, then position four then position 5, and so on. So here are the positions. If I can find a link between the position and the number in that position, then I can skip everything and say, well, in position 100, I'll have a number. The only task that I have, really, is to figure out what is the link. Now, this is a matter of personal preference, how you want to lay this out. I want to lay it out in a way that helps me see the connection between these two as easily as possible. And for some reason, for me personally, a table is much more convenient. That doesn't mean it will be for you. You might have, uh, have it already with this layout. It doesn't seem to work for me as consistently and easily. So I want to make two columns. That's just me. But do whatever helps you, right? It's just the same thing flipped around. For some reason, it looks nicer to me. 
So in position one, I have the number three. I'm doing nothing new here. In position two, I have the number seven. Position three, I have the number 11. Uh, four or five uh, positions would usually do the trick for standard sequences. And of course, I'm going to go down eventually and try and figure out what is the one sitting in line with the 100. Okay. So I'm going to go to position two and just elaborate on the pattern that I've seen. To get seven, it was three plus four. And of course, uh, I'm doing this in a lot of detail for those people that need it. You might be one that who, who doesn't need it, and that's okay. I don't know. 11 I got by saying 7 plus 4, right? That's how I get the next one. Even little Timmy is going to uh, notice that. But now I will... Actually, I'm going to do them all like this. Uh, 15 I got by saying 11 plus 4. 19 I got by saying 15 plus 4, and I stop there. Hopefully that's enough. So now I'm going to go to my third one here and elaborate on the 7. The 7 in its detailed form is 3 plus 4. So 11 is 3 plus 4 plus this 4. 15 is 11 plus 4, and 11 is... 3 plus 4 plus 4, and then I have the extra 4. 50, uh, 19 is 15 plus 4. 15 itself is 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, and then I have another 4. So if I simplify this, let's say backwards here, I have in 19, 3 plus 4 groups of 4. That is multiplication. In 15, I have 3 plus three groups of four. In 11, I have three plus two groups of four. And I see that seven can then be seen as three plus one group of four. And three can be seen as three plus zero groups of four. So now when I look at what's actually changing from one detailed calculation to the next, it's the number of fours, and that's the only thing that's changing. The three is always there. It's always a number of fours that I'm adding. The only thing is how many am I adding? So now I'm trying to maybe get some color in here. Ooh, that's nice. So now I'm trying to find the link between the position and the changing aspect in the calculation. Position, changing. When the position is 2, the changing number is a 1. Position 3, number is a 2. Position 4, number is a 3. Position 5, number is a 4. What is the link between the position and the part that is changing? I know it's Monday, you don't want to say much, but this is where you say stuff. Ooh, tough crowd. I'm starting to think you can't even hear me. Very paranoid. Maybe there's a technical issue. I don't know. No, I, I can hear you. Okay. So then someone, it doesn't have to be you, but I appreciate uh, the feedback. What is the link between the position, the left purple okay. circle, and the right purple circle? Sorry, I was still speaking. I couldn't hear you. Do you mind repeating? Minus one. Minus one. The number on the right is always one less than the position, which then tells me if I want to calculate the numbers sitting in line with 100, it's going to be three plus one less number of fours. I can then calculate that. Let's give MathBot something to do. He's a little lonely. Uh, the classic mic doesn't work. I know it well. 3 plus 99 times 4. 399. So 399. 
we can go up here, 399, and we jumped everything in the middle by just exploiting the pattern in the calculation of the number using its position. All right. So this is very handy. I, whew, so handy. Uh, when, especially when there are number patterns. For me, laying it out in the table makes a difference, maybe because I have space to elaborate and see a calculation. Maybe that is why I like the column version better, though there's no difference between the two. Trying to see a link between the position and the thing that is changing in the calculation of the number. The number itself might hide the detail of where it actually comes from and how it's related to the position. A skill that I found not many people have to, to try and notice patterns. But, oh, it's so useful. So, so useful. Okay. Let us go to another big one in terms of uh, importance. Okay, 313. Let us, oh, I've got lots of space here. Exercise 313. All right. So I have different parts here. Uh, the first one is definitely, I can ask this to what, grade one, maybe. Determine the following sums. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, seven. Now, because it's uh, ending a finite sum with not a lot of uh, terms in it, I can certainly just do it manually. Uh, there is no downside to that, and it's good practice for little Timmy. Maybe it's good practice for me, so I'm going to do it. It's an equal sign here. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus, six, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus 7 is 28. No problem at all. The problem really, in terms of efficiency, only comes in when I have something much, much longer, that doing it one by one is not efficient. I don't have a ton of space for the next one, so let me make a new page. So if you look at number two, there I have to add the numbers one all the way to a hundred. And as much fun as that would be to do them one at a time, I suspect that it's going to take me a while. And I'll probably make a mistake keeping track of everything. So let's write the first three and the last three. Nope, not that one. That's the last four. 98, 99, and 100. Now, in order for me to not do this systematically, sort of a brute force method of adding them one at a time, I'm going to have to be a little bit more clever to figure it out. Because these numbers are all different, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the same sum underneath, but I'm going to do it backwards. So I'll now start with 100 and then 99 and line them up so that one, each one is under uh, one from the first sum. So the last one will then be 3, 2, and 1. It's the exact same thing, just written again but flipped around. So now what I'm looking for, let's call it uh, S for sum, right? The first line is the only thing I'm really looking for. I've now written the same sum again. Okay. Now I'm going to add these up 
all of the numbers I see. I'm going to add them up. But I'm going to add them up in a systematic way. I'm going to add them up just these two. And I'll get 101, of course. Then I'm going to add up just those two. 2 and 99, that also makes 101. Then I'm going to add up just these. 101. Then I'm going to continue like that. My three dots means continue like that. I'll add up those two and I'll get 101 again. Add up these two, 101 again. Add up the last two, 101 again. And now I'm going to add up all of these. Because these 101s are all the same, the addition now becomes repeated addition, which is multiplication. This is now, I'll really spell this out, repeated addition. If I'm adding the same number over and over and over, that is multiplication, which is much more efficient. But originally I couldn't do that because the numbers were all different. So I kind of was stuck. But by doubling up the sum that I'm looking for and doing it pairwise, I get the same number every time. So then the only question is, I need to know how many of these 101s are there, right? Repeated addition requires that I know how many there are, and then it's the multiplication. How many, would you say, of these 101s are there? A hundred? There are a hundred. There are a hundred of them. I like to sometimes, when I have an opportunity, write out a nice detailed answer, especially for these kind of questions, to lead by example and show that an answer to a math question does not have to just be numbers and scribbles. There should be words making it easy to read and understand. Okay, there are a hundred of them. So, this is equal to 100 times 101. That's an ugly 101, I apologize. There are 100 of them, valued 101. That's multiplication. But when I look at this bottom row and add all of that together and get an answer, that's really double the sum that I'm ultimately looking for. So this is double the value of S, the sum I'm actually looking for. I doubled it up. Okay, so let me just get rid of my arrow here. It's a little bit in my way. Get out of your arrow. So 2 times the S I'm looking for is 100 times 101. Therefore, to get the value of just S, I have to divide by 2, because I had double what I'm looking for. And if I calculate that, that should be 5,050. Which, if you spent your hour, I'm guessing, I don't know how long it takes, to do them one at a time, 1 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, sometime later, plus 100, and you did it all correctly, you should get 5,050. But that was not efficient in any way. How can we come up with a strategy that exploits the pattern and gets us the answer in a much more efficient time frame? This strategy, super important. Hint, hint, cough, cough. Any questions? on what we did at any stage. Um, why was the bottom, like why did it have to equal 101? Um, could it have equaled 100? You mean this, this guy? Mm -hmm. Because one plus 100 is 101. Okay, so it so really that... equals whatever that pair adds up to. And we'll see okay. some, some variations that if I have different numbers to start with and I pair them up like that, then the answer is going to be different. The point is that they're always the same. 
which then allows me to switch over to multiplication. Originally, I couldn't do that because they're all different. There's no way to do that. I have to add them up one by one. But if I'm adding up stuff and each one is exactly the same, then I can cross over to multiplication. That's really where multiplication kind of comes from intuitively. Repeated addition. I just had to sort of do more than the question requires by writing the same sum backwards. And then when I pair them up, I get all the same number. Whatever that number is, is what uh, comes from those pairs. And in this case, it happens to be 101. Okay, that makes sense. And is that the reason why we do, we divide by two? Because it's the sum adding with the sum again? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I had only, I only wanted the original one, but mm -hmm. I doubled it up in order to get my repeated addition, which means the answer that I get temporarily is twice what I'm looking for which means I have to divide by two to make that correction and actually answer what they want me to answer. I sort of took a detour. Like if I want to be efficient, I have to do more than what they want and then come back to their answer. But it turns out to actually be faster than just straight up adding everything. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thanks. Any other questions or thoughts? This one, more than, I'd say almost more than any of the other ones. If you have any doubt about anything that's on the screen right now, at some stage, it doesn't have to be right now, maybe you want to think about it first, but do not leave anything uh, to uncertainty of any degree. It has to be perfect. But it's our first example, to be fair. Now, there is a number three, but I'm going to skip it for just a second and rush to exercise 314 just to see some variety and get used to this strategy first i am going to do number three it's going to sit over there but not right now whoops i just want to want to get used to this method first and to do that i need to do another uh, other kinds of numbers All right, so what did, I, what did I say this one? 314. Exercise 314. Whew, time just flies. Wow. I don't want to rush, but I'd like to get it in today. But we go as far as, as fast as we need to go. We still have tomorrow as a catch up session. If half of that uh, is uh, on the exercises we're missing, that's okay. Rather not rush, right? 2 plus 4 plus 6, all the way to 100. So 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus all the way, I'll maybe do 98 and 100. I just want to show enough here that the, the sequence is obvious. So at least the first three and maybe the last couple. So now I really only have one strategy, right? And that's writing it backwards. 100, 98. 96 all the way down to a 4 and a 2 and I'll be done. Okay, so I'm ultimately looking for just that top row. But I doubled it up to try and get some efficiency. And then I'm going to add them pairwise. And in this case, I get 102. Now this strategy is going to work if the pairs all result in the same number. And look at that, they do. So as soon as I have that, now I know, okay, this is just a matter of time. I'm going to get there now. If, they all, if they're all the same number, I can switch over to multiplication, even though I'm, I'm calculating twice what I'm looking for. Temporarily, it's going to speed things up. Okay, so now I have repeated addition. Oof, that is an ugly arrow. Uh, bracket, I mean. What happened there, Mr. Bracket? There we go. I have repeated addition. I have a number of 102s. The only question is how many of these 102s are there? 
in general, that is sort of the the sticky spot for some. But with some variety in questions and building our experience, we'll get we'll get above that uh, as well. Right now, this is only my second example, right? Trying to make things different, but still manageable. How many 102s do you think there are? Well, how many pairs do you think there are? I would be 25. Well, let's think about it. This is closely linked to the previous one, right? Now, in the case where I started with one, two, three, and it went all the way to 100, I hope everyone agreed that there was 100 of them, right? Because I don't skip anything. I'm literally, the numbers are counting themselves. One, two, three, first one, second one, third one, and so on. Now, what did I do to get this sequence? No, no, the, I see it now. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm, I'm, obviously, you, you said 25 on purpose just to see how people feel, right? That was obvious to me. The one is missing. The three is missing. The five is missing. Every other number is missing on the way to 100. So instead of the full 100, I've missed half of them. So there should be 50 of them. Right? But of course, I am uh, relying on what I've seen before, trying to make connections, trying to answer questions in situations that are a little bit different. How different? Is it connected still? Can I use that? I'm building uh, with my experience. Right? There are 50. But, and if you're not happy with the 50, definitely think about it. Let me know. We have a Q&A session tomorrow, I think. Let's double check. But there is one coming. Might be tomorrow. So definitely don't leave your questions unanswered. So now we're done, essentially. We have double what we're looking for, but that's okay. Repeated addition, 50 of these 102s, that's multiplication. And then my sum, the single top line that the question wants as well, can be obtained by just dividing that by two. And then I get whatever I get. It's really the method is more important than the answer, but we'll see an answer anyway. Two thousand five hundred and fifty. Two thousand five hundred and fifty. But the method is what gets me there. The answer is kind of irrelevant. It's the method that if I have the right strategy, I understand the steps involved, the the final numerical answer is just a matter of time. It's not something I worry about. It's not something I obsess over. It's something the calculator tells me. I really don't care. I can't read anything into that 2,550. It means nothing to me, honestly. The method means everything. So what are the main steps here? Set it up, reverse it, and pair them up. And if all goes well, we'll get the same number every time. Now, of course, there are sequences where you won't get the same number every time. Those are much more difficult beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to see a little bit of a strategy, right? There's no end to how complicated these things become. We're just taking a first little step. So for our purposes, they're always going to be the same. Then it's a question of, okay, well, for the repeated addition, I need to know how many of these there are. Then I can finish my question. Uh, can I explain one more time why we divide by two? Because our question was in exercise 314 number one to add up all those numbers. I then for convenience called it S for sum. Right? I want to find the value of this top line, this sum. And only that. That's what the question wants. Yet I wrote the same sum again and then added up all those things in the circles. That is exactly double what I am looking for. All of these two together 
is double the value of s. I doubled it up in order to get the multiplication going. There was no other choice. So I just have to remember that, oh, what I'm calculating when I say 50 times 102 is actually twice what I'm looking for because I wrote the, the sum twice. So I have to go back and divide it by 2 to get what the question wants me to get. So I had to sort of take a detour in order to get there efficiently. So I'm just getting used to the method here. Uh, let's try the second one. I actually want to jump between them, so I'm going to keep making new pages. Why not? I have infinitely many pages. <laughs> That's now number two in 314. So I believe this one started with a 20 to 40. Okay. So 20 plus 21, 22, dot, dot, dot. Maybe the last two, maybe a 39 and a 40. Right? That is what I'm looking for. Call it whatever you want. I'll call it S for sum. I know my strategy, I only have one. I'm gonna write them in reverse. Yeah, we're gonna to have to go into tomorrow as well, and that's okay. I don't wanna rush these. There is no benefit to going faster than we can go. So my strategy is to write the same sum again, and then add up all of what I see, but in a clever way, by pairing them up. And when I pair them up, I get 60 in this case. Whoa, what was that? 60 again, 60 again, and I keep doing it, and every time I get 60, and that makes me happy because my strategy is going to work. I want them all the same so that I can do repeated addition multiplication. I know I'm counting double what I'm looking for, but that's an easy fix at the end. I'm not worried about that. I can easily correct that. Okay, so then the question, like always, becomes, for now, how many of these 60s are there? Right, that's the question, just like it was there, just like it was there, just like it is here. Strategy is the same. The numbers might change things a little bit. This time I got a 60. No big deal. How many are there? She says 20. There are 20 of them. Who supports her 20 or who feels uneasy or unsure, even if it's 1%? We have to be very confident about the 20 or we're going to have to scribble some stuff to make sure, right? You have to be 100%. Is everyone 100% happy with the 20? You don't know her. She could be messing with us. Certainly not 40, right? There can't be 40 of them because we would have had to start at one to get 40 of these pairs. Just like we started with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all the way to 100, we had 100 of these 101s, right? So definitely it can't be 40, because we're only starting at 20. So we're definitely missing some. Well, everyone seems to support your 20, but I am just not 100% sure. Let's have a look. So let's call, let's look at positions. This 20 is now in position 1, this 21 is in position 2, then position 3, then position something. Now, do you agree that if I can figure out the question mark, the position of 40, then I would know how many there are? Because the positions directly count how many there are. This is the first term. This is the second. This is the third. What's the 40? That would then answer the how many question. So I'm not sure here. Not sure. 
Okay. But now I'm back to, where was I? Nope, not that one. <laughs> I'm back to this situation where I want to find the link to the position and the numbers. Now, let me emphasize this. I'm doing this so that I can be 100% sure. I need to be 100% sure. And no one else was saying anything else. So I'm now going off uh, to be sure. Even if people are now saying other numbers, it now feels like guessing. And I need to personally be confident before I can move on. Otherwise, because my answer now depends on this number. I'm not sure now. What do I do? What do I do to be sure? I'm going to make a link between the position and the number because position values count these numbers exactly. For me, the table is ideal. So position one has a number 20. Position two uh, not tw has a number, whoopsie, there we go, 21. Position three has a number 22. Let's do some more. Position four has number 23. I need to go on and figure out what number, oh sorry, what position will 40 be in? Which means I need to figure out a link between the position and the number in that position. But at the very least, I need to be, there needs to be agreement that if I find the link, I can find that position. And if I have the position of the number 40, that then tells me exactly how many there are. Because see how the position values count them, first, second, third, fourth, exactly. So by finding this position where 40 sits, it's the same as counting how many there are. Positions value, position values always count them. Okay, so now what's the link to go from position 1 to a 20? That would also work to get from 2 to 21, 3 to 22, 4 to 23. What's the link? Oh, she already said it. It's 19. I add 19. And that works every time. So that's the link. Between the position and the number, there's a difference of 19, which means that's also going to work to get to 40, which means it's 21. But now I've proven why there are 21. And I have no doubt whatsoever anymore. I needed to do this. Sometimes you need to do it. Sometimes you don't. It depends on the numbers involved. It depends on you. It depends on your experience. It depends on a whole bunch of things. But regardless, I need to be 100% sure because the rest of my answer depends on that number. And there's no guess. I'm not interested in guessing. I now know there are 21 of them. And I can finish it up by saying two times the sum I'm looking for is 21 groups of 60. Oh, not 16. Multitasking. 60. So to get the sum value that they're looking for, I simply divide by 2. I can ask MathBot what that is, but I don't really care because it's a formality now. 60 divided by 2. Let me let me say I do care, but there's no thinking involved at this stage. 630. Let me zoom out. All right. So the strategy isn't difficult, like three steps, right? Write it in reverse, add them, uh, maybe three main steps. Write it in reverse and add them up pairwise, get the same number. Then figure out how many of those there are. And that's often the sticky point. To be confident in that number that you get. If I'm not, uh, you know deep down when you are, there's a little bit of doubt. Like I'm not 100% sure, I think it's this. Whenever that happens, I need to do something to be 100% sure. I can't like, oh, I'm just gonna hope. I think it's 20, I'm just gonna hope for the best. Even though it's very dependent on my experience. This is my third question in. I can't necessarily expect myself to be 100% confident in everything. Maybe I need to go do some scribbles. 
and help myself. Be confident. Do something on the side. That's okay. I do it all the time. But whenever every line I write down, I'm 100% sure. And if I'm not, I need to go be sure. Once you have the number of terms there are, then it's multiplication, but that's double what we're looking for. So I correct that to find the answer that they are actually asking. So unfortunately, we have to pause here until tomorrow. And for half of tomorrow, at least, we have to see, are there other strategies I can use? Sort of linking to, where is it now? Linking to exercise 313 number three. But that's another strategy I wanted to, to sort of solidify the basic strategy first before I see variations and then decide which ones I like, pros and cons to both. And then I think there are a couple of exercises like 315 uh, and I think there's a round robin tournament one we missed that will quickly wrap up. But I don't want to miss out on, on all of the things that there are in these uh, sum calculation questions. Question. For tomorrow, on the schedule, it says that there's just a Q and A at eight thirty, or is there class at eight thirty tomorrow? Yes, that was the schedule. But now that we ran out of time, we need to use that to finish up, and okay. then the second half of it will be questions. If you have any, sounds good. Thank you. But of course, if you don't uh, want to do that at eight thirty, there's of course going to be a video. Uh, so it's it's totally up to you. Whatever uh, whatever you prefer, you don't have to feel restricted by any time schedule. All of these things are recorded. All of them are backed up. Watch them at, in your own time. Ask questions after that. All of it uh, is good. Whatever works for you. My plan was to finish, uh, but it's hard to guess. You know, it's hard to guess exactly how long these will take. So this time we go a little bit over. We won't use the full uh, time tomorrow, so there will still be time for some questions. And we have other office hours, I'm sure, in the week as well. Any last words on this? All right, then we will wrap this up uh, tomorrow, whether that is live or in a video. Uh, Either way, do make sure you uh, watch the other half of, the, of these kinds of questions. All right. Until then. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video. And to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.